Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, in this short video, we're going to continue from the last one where we talked about connecting through the SDK to AWS. Um, we're going to build on that project example, so please see the previous video on the, on the project setup and on all that kind of stuff. I want to talk in this video a little bit about server-side encryption. So what does that mean? It means that when you upload objects, files into S3, you're telling Amazon, please make sure that at rest, these objects are encrypted. And at, uh, Amazon, um, within S3, they manage all the key, uh, the key creation and, and rotation and all that kind of stuff what, completely transparently, right? So you don't have to do anything uh, about keys whatsoever. You basically say, um, it's a request at the time you upload the file to say, please make sure this resource is encrypted at rest. I want to show you how you actually achieve this. Um, using the uh, using the the SDK, right? So using the API, um, the you can do it from the it, within the user interface as well. But uh, I think you know I, I want to kind of uh, you know give another example of the SDK and how powerful it is. So so basically, um, I'm just going to run uh, I'm going to run my second example here, right? So the second example is um, is this method here, server side encryption. Right, so I'm going to just go back to my main method and I'm going to copy that there. So if I just debug through this, so, so let, let's just have a, um, I'll just basically explain each line of code as we go through it. Um, I think that probably will, will make, make uh, the most sense. Okay, so um, hopefully everybody, is, if you're interested in server-side encryption in, in S3, um, then I guess you know what S3 is. Um, so I don't need to go into too much detail there. Um, so I've hit my breakpoint there, and I'm going to just quickly uh, jump inside. Okay, so here, so I've, I've already downloaded my credentials from the previous video. Um, again, see that if you're interested in how you set this up. Essentially, these credentials encapsulate all the information about which account you're connecting to, and also uh, which user you're, you're using, who's, which user's credentials you're using to make the request. One thing I do have to do first is I need to go back into my console, which I'll show you now. And I will quickly make sure that, the, so the use that I'm using is YouTube example two. I need to basically uh, detach this policy, which is the S3 read only. And I'm gonna attach S3 full access, right? So, th so this now this user has full access to do anything they want in S3, which is exactly what we want to happen. So now, now we can carry on, right? So we're just de debugging through. By the way, this project I will link down below. It's uh, it's I, I've put it in GitHub. It it literally works right out of the box. Um, all the de all the dependencies are are already there. If you've seen the previous video, I, I briefly went through all of this stuff. Um, it's it's extremely straightforward um, to to actually get this up and running. So this is free for you to check out and run at your own site. Um, so we create a client which encapsulates the credentials and the client is the proxy that we use to invoke all the services, okay? So let's carry on. And I'm just gonna go over to S3 now. So first thing I wanna do in the example is to clear down all my existing S3 resources. So sorry if it's a bit small, but um, so you can see at the moment, I, I have a bucket right now. Um, which is this one, which I'm going to delete now because I don't want to build up a load of uh, S3 buckets in case Amazon start charging me an arm and a leg. So um, I'm going to step over this. This is a utility method here, uh, bucket utils delete bucket. This is in this class here. It's it's in the project, so you can uh, you're free to to obviously to use it, etc. etc. Um, I'll be I'll be checking more useful um, methods into there in case uh, anybody's interested in keeping an eye on the on the project in GitHub. So right now. Right now it's just listing the buckets um, and then it's going to delete them in a second. Okay. So. Okay, so it's listed the buckets. It's, it only has one to list. Um, it's going to delete that bucket. Um, and so now we should see that that is finished. So if we refresh the screen over here, we'll see that this bucket has now disappeared. Um, this is quite, sorry if you've seen the previous video, it's a bit repetitive, um, but uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to create a new bucket, just like we did in the previous video. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to, I've written a, a really useful utility method here, which is re, so read file from resources, and we've got a, an encrypted folder policy text file. 
right? And let's have a look at this. So this is in my resource folder down here. Again, it's in the project that, uh, that you have available. So, um, so let's have a look. So this is a text file, and then the Java code basically pulls this in, reads this in, and, and creates a string from it. Um, what we're saying here is this is a bucket policy. So this is different from an IAM policy. An IAM policy is something that you that is agnostic of any 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 actors in the system. You you attach that IAM policy to two different users, groups, or roles. Um, and, and, and the the bucket policy is 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 actually it defines which resources, which actions, but also which users, right? So it, and, and that policy applies to the actual bucket itself. So there are two statements in this policy, and what this statement says is basically um, in the request, okay, so we're saying, this is just a statement ID, we're saying the action is to deny, to deny the, the call on any, any user, so principal is the user, um, when the action is put object, so if you're trying to put objects into the S3 bucket, right, when the when the resource name follows this pattern, right? And I've, I've specified bucket name here. Bucket name we're going to replace in the Java code um, with the with the with the name at runtime, right? But this is just a, a placeholder, like a template policy. So bucket name is a temp is, is a placeholder. But anything where it says where, where the bucket name and then the fault and then the 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 subfolder name is encrypted, right? If that if we, if basically we have not specified AES two five six encryption in the HTTP header, which happens behind the scenes in, in the Java um, in the Java call, when when we call put object, you'll see in a second how we specify that that Java call has to is telling the the AWS server side to to encrypt using AES two five six. So that has to be set to AES two five six in the request, and also basically if if this if this parameter in the HTTP request is null, then also deny. So this is basically saying, you know, if it's either null or it doesn't equal this, then uh, then deny the deny the put, right? So you will not be able to put that object into S3 unless your request specifies this parameter, XAMZ server side encryption, AES two five six. Okay, that's the policy. That so we're gonna now what we're gonna do now is apply that policy to the bucket. And then we're going to show the different types of uploads that work and, and don't work. So hopefully it'll become clear um, with the examples. So back here, I've said string policy. Let's let's just pull this back in. Oh, by the way, so over here, we'll just show you that we've actually, so we've created the bucket now, by now, right? So we should have one bucket, which we do, okay? So now we're saying, now, so the, the policy string, we're going to read our encrypted folder policy text, which is the, which is the file we just looked at, right? We're going to read that in from the from the file system. We're going to replace the bucket name placeholder with my new bucket name, which is Matua System Current Time Millies, right? And then that's our policy. So now we've done the replacement, and now the policy applies to this specific bucket, right? A bucket policy applies to a specific bucket. So you can't you can't specify different buckets bucket names inside the bucket policy. It has to be um, that particular uh, bucket. So then I've just, so now you see we've we output this to the console and you can see now we've replaced bucket name with, with my actual, the name of my actual bucket, which is the same as the name you can see over here, right? So now we're just saying set the policy on that bucket with this bucket name, with this policy, right? And this is another service on the S3 client object. So that's an API that we use out of the box. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and upload the file, right? So just like we did in the previous video, we're going to take that same file, and what we're going to do is we're going to read it from the file system like that, right? And then what we're going to do is we're going we're going to upload this file into a file path, which is unencrypted slash file name, right? So if you remember in S3, there's no real concept of actual folders, but you can specify a file name that includes sort of pseudo file paths so that when you actually look at the S3 bucket you can actually browse the different nodes in the path right so when I if we look at if we actually look at the contents of this folder right now right 
It's, the bucket is empty. Right? I haven't put anything in that bucket yet. Right? Now, this is interesting because this, sh this shows you the whole concept of the, 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 the folders. Right? So we've created a put object request here with the new bucket name. So, we're, so this, that's, that's our bucket. And we're saying the file that we've read from the file system, right, which is this one, some text.txt, right, which has some garbage text in there, right? This one, upload it to S3 with the key, which is basically the file name in S3, unencrypted slash whatever that file name was with a timestamp on the end of it, right? So let's see what actually happens when we do that. And don't forget the policy we defined to specify that we had to encrypt our, uh, that we had to specify, sorry, not that we had to specify server-side encryption. That only applies to to paths where it says slash encrypted, right? So when we specify slash unencrypted, this policy doesn't apply, right? So go back here, and if I just so if we step over the next couple of lines, so now we're saying we've created our request. Now we're calling the put object. So we're sending that object into S3, and also we can we can print out to the console what the what the the encryption algorithm was, if any, right? And we can see the encryption status is null because we did not do anything in this request to specify that the server side encryption should be enabled, right? So let's have a look at our bucket now. So if we just if we just move our focus onto the bucket. So if we go back to our bucket, right? And we go, so we go inside our bucket. So now we see this, this folder has magically appeared just because we uploaded a key with slash unencrypted slash the fold name. So this is really just a logical, logical presentation detail to, to allow you to sort of sort and navigate your resources. So if I click this, now we have our, we have our object in there, right? So now we can, we can click on this, we can, we can download it, we can do all this kind of stuff. It's sitting there, it's in S3, and it's in a pseudo folder called unencrypted, which is perfectly fine, right? So now, let's, let's go on to the next case, right? Which is, I'm going to do the same thing, but this time I'm going to upload it into a, a file path, which is, instead of unencrypted, it is encrypted, right? So we're, we're down here, right? So the path is encrypted, and I'm not, again, I'm not specifying any... Um, any, any any encryption has to happen, right? So what we see see now is an exception has been thrown, right? And the, so basically, what's happened is Amazon has not allowed us to to store this uh, this object because we have a policy in place on the bucket that says if the file path is on this encrypted file path, then I have to specify. That, I, that, that in the request that S3 should encrypt the file on their side. So a key point comes out of this, right? You can't say to S3, by default, anything I dump in this folder, encrypt it as soon as it arrives, right? You have to basically say at the time you upload the object, this object should be encrypted at rest. So if you want a, if you want a folder or a bucket that, that to ensure that everything is, is encrypted server side, the only way to do it is to basically set a policy on the bucket that rejects any uploads that don't specify that they want S3 to encrypt it, right? Sounds a bit of a, a mouthful. If it's not clear, um, give me a shout, I'll explain it again. It's actually not as complicated as it sounds, but... Um, so th in this third scenario, I'm doing exactly the same thing, right? Same file, same bucket name, but this time, and same file path, right? So I'm still, up still uploading it into the slash encrypted file path, which, by the way, doesn't yet exist, right? There's no there's no encrypted folder yet because there's no there's been no successful upload into a the slash encrypted path right but now now if we do this now here we go now what we're going to do is we're going to this is this is how we specify that the the encryption header in the API we create an object metadata object right and we set the SSEA algorithm to AES two five six server side encryption and then we set that metadata object in the put request, right? And then we just do exactly the same as before. We're calling S3 client dot put object and we pass it through there, right? And then if then we can see from the response, if we look in the console, 
uploaded object encryption status is AES256. So what we've now done is we've managed to upload that same file, but into a slash encrypted pseudo folder, right? And that file is now encrypted at rest, right? The actual object in AWS is now encrypted on the server side. The key point also is when we, when we consume that file, it's completely transparent to us, right? So we don't have to specify any encryption keys or decryption keys or whatever. Um, th the whole thing is managed on the Amazon side. So the only thing you have to do is basically the uploader has to specify it is encrypted, but anybody who's consuming that file does not need to worry about whether it's encrypted or not, okay? So then if we actually go back to our bucket here, sorry, it takes a, a couple of seconds. If I just refresh the page, it might be better. So now we have two folders, and I always use double quotes for folders because it's not really a physical folder. But now we have two, let's say, uh, two nodes in our S3 bucket, one for unencrypted, which we did initially, and now one for encrypted. And now we see the same file. So we see th the same file that we uploaded, but now this object here this object is actually encrypted on the server side, right? So whereas if we go back one to unencrypted, it looks like, so it's the same, it's the same object, but this one is actually unencrypted. So that's how, to, so just to summarize, we, we, created, we created a bucket, right? Then we created a policy that specifies any upload into that bucket on the slash encrypted file path must specify AES256 encryption in the request. We applied that policy to the bucket, okay? Which is uh, here, set bucket policy. We tried various scenarios of uploading a file without encryption into an unencry unencrypted path, which worked. We tried the same into an encrypted path without specifying encryption, and it didn't work. And finally, we, we uploaded a, an upload into the slash encrypted folder with the encryption specified and showed that it did work. So hopefully that clarifies kind of, first of all, conceptually what the server side encryption really means in AWS and also um, gives you some, some, some more experience building on top of the last video on kind of how, how you can use the API. Um, hopefully some of these utilities as well, like you know being able to specify a policy in a text file and read it into a string um, it, it's all there in the GitHub project, so all the utility methods are there. Feel free to, to take it, use it and abuse it, um, share it, whatever you want. Hope you found it useful. Any questions, give me a shout, um, and thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.